what's up guys i just wanted to do this uh video um i've done one after my brother king kenny's fight a few fights ago um and i thought i'd do another one i don't really get time to do a lot of youtube videos because of my schedule um but i think it's good from time to time to reflect on things that have just happened in this case deji's fight you know i was very proud of him of what he done especially as he weren't even at you know a hundred percent i know we were saying 60 percent, but that's me being nice you're probably at 40 percent. but there's a lot of things i'm proud of him for for that reason um a lot of people might question his commitment um but he is committed and what you gotta understand is everyone's different you know and people what you gotta realize as a coach not every fight is the same some need a um, more encouragement some people need an arm around the shoulder um, to give them that little boost and tell them you know you are great and you can go places you know whereas other people are more self-motivated and they don't need someone in their ear all the time or you know or to give them a hug all my fighters are different they all have different personalities and I think one quality if you're going to be a coach a good quality to have is to understand your fighters not just as boxers but as human beings and I remember when Deji first came to me, he came to me as like a broken man. Uh, on the boxing side of things, you know, I come from professional boxing. So on the boxing side of things, to people, he might have been boxing for four years or five years or whatever. But to me, it was like he's never boxed before. That's what it was like to me. What stood out to me that he looked like as someone that, you know, was a bit broken mentally he didn't know who to turn to who to trust and i'm a very good reader of uh people i observe people a lot and that's the energy i felt from him and uh, from day one I, always, I i had a soft spot for him um so i was willing to go through you know you know i was willing to go through whatever you know, just to get him to where he is now, um, not just with boxing, but mentally as well, and let him understand that um, he can trust me um, and I've got his back through good, through bad, and he can count on me if he wants to talk to me about personal things. Uh, if it's nothing to do with boxing, he's got someone where he can come to and rely on and talk to as a, as a friend and not just a coach for boxing. So when he first come to me, um, I told him, I said, I'm going to treat you the same as I do my professional boxers. You know, we're like family here. You know, I'm going to treat you just the same. You know, so that's what I've done from day one. Um, and, you know, I didn't even want to take another YouTuber on at the time. Um, but I thought it would help Kenny. Uh, Kenny came with me, came to me and wanted me to help him get into boxing. And that's how I got into YouTube boxing. And I've had to, you know, work the two and balance the two between professional boxing and the influencer boxing and be real to who I am and teach them the same way I would my pros. Because you get a lot of deaths in boxing. Just a few weeks ago, someone died in boxing. So I wanted to teach them the right way the right fundamentals keep them safe so they can keep themselves safe in those in the in that ring with those 10 ounce gloves on uh, um, and then with with time with patience develop them into better boxers uh, where they can get results and and you know get good at it and be proud of themselves um so yeah with back to you back to deji being only 40 percent in my eyes um, I forgive him for that. The reason why I forgive him for that is because it's not that he isn't committed. Because uh, he is committed. Because, he remember, he went from um, Wasabi straight to Fuzi, straight from Fuzi to Floyd. You know, so he had three fights in, in quick time. You know, so he is committed. But then, as I said, when you, when you fight Floyd Mayweather, it's like, where do you go after fighting Floyd Mayweather? You fought the GOAT, one of the greatest of all time. So I can forgive him for chilling for three months. Um, and, and, you know, 
losing sense of reality a bit because it's like a dream to do something like that. A gamer coming from being a gamer in YouTube and, you know, now you're fighting, fighting one of the greats of all time. It is like a dream. I, I haven't even processed, processed it myself um, either. So um, I forgive him for that. Um, and it was about what do we do from here? You know, we're fighting swarms. We've got a short amount of time, but I'm going to give you a game plan. And through all your experiences of fighting Floyd, getting your win from Fousey and through my teachings and giving you the right game plan and the right details, we're going to win this fight easy. Even at 40, 50, 60 percent, we're going to win the fight. Just listen to what I'm saying. We're going to win the fight. And the reason why I'm proud, because he wasn't at his best. He had to do certain things to get him through the fight. And if you understand boxing, even boxers at the highest level do these small details. Um, even Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, he doesn't fight anymore. He does exhibitions. So his body and his conditioning is not the same as when he used to fight. So he has to do certain things in the fight, in the exhibitions to get him through, but still be dominant. And that's why I'm impressed with Deji. Because he's showing that he's understanding boxing more. His IQ is getting better. And um, and he's learning the small details of boxing. Of how to manage rounds. Um, manipulation. You know. Feints. Uh, head movement. Going for little walks. A little showboating. Um, tying them up on the inside. You know. All these little things you don't understand. It's what you do when you don't punch is just as vital as when you do punch. So all those things I was just talking about, um, it's called active recovery. So to the judges, it looks like you're in full control and you're doing something, but at the same time, you're reserving that energy or you're getting back that oxygen because you're a bit fatigued. So that's why I'm very impressed with what he done. Because everything we trained for, for that Swarms fight, he was doing in the fight. You know, so obviously every day he has, we have to improve him. We have to get him to a point where he's improving. But at the same time, the game plan I put in place for that fight was for him to manage being at 40 to 60%. And that's why I'm impressed with him. I'm very proud of him for that. And that's showing maturity, that's showing experience, and that's showing an understanding of the sport. So imagine when he's at 100%, because he ain't slacking off now. He's got his momentum back. He's found his mojo. Again, the Floyd Mayweather's gone, he's done. It's a, it's a good memory to have. But now he's back in the swing of things. So now it's going to be easier the next time we train for a fight. And what people have to remember is, just to give you... Um, some advice when you've got a date for a fight and you start camp that camp should be about you just getting fight um, conditioned for the fight through sparring through conditioning fitness but also uh, working on a game plan a strategy for that fight it's what you do when you don't have a date that is very vital for your boxing and for your progression because when you don't have a date, you have time to slow things down and work on the small details of boxing and break things down and work things, work on things over and over again with repetition. Fortunately for me, I have some crazy boxing mind where I can get people to do what I want them to do in a short space of time. It's not ideal, but I know how to do it. Um, so that's a piece of advice for you. Just um, what you do when you haven't got a date is very vital to your boxing, to, to your progression of boxing. So, yeah, don't be so harsh on Deji. He is committed. Um, he does care. He just needs the right people around him uh, to show him how good he can be and how great he can be. And that's why I'm with him through the ups, through the down, through the down times. I've got his back. I've got a soft spot for him. He's special to me. So um, 
I want him to be good. I want him to be great. And I want him to go out there and do damage. Boxing takes a lot of time and it, it takes a lot of patience. So people have to be patient. You know, not every fight is the same. You know, Deji's been through a lot of trauma before he came to me. And just in one year of being for me, with me, look what everything he's done, what, look what he's achieved, you know. So give it more time and he's going to achieve more, you know. Um, I'm very proud of his performance, the way he was fainting, the way he was creeping with his feet to get closer, putting his head offline, going on little walks, the body punching, which we've been working on a lot in training camps, is putting the shots together, head to body, body to head. You know, um, the defense, of course, is getting better. His whole, whole understanding of the game. So I'm very proud of Deji. Um, yeah. And I love you, champ. So on to the next one.